Hey, so years and years and years ago, I made a video being like, yo, here's how I record shit off of videotapes and bring it to the computer. And it was a good video, and it was, you know, five star worthy. But uh, I used a clip from Red Dwarf in it for a little bit too long because that's the tape I was ripping. So, uh, fortunately, it's blocked worldwide, and it's been that way for years and years and years. So, I figure I do it a little bit differently now, so let's do an updated tutorial. Here's how I record from videotapes to the computer in 2017. Okay, so here's what you're gonna need, but you're not gonna be expecting this, a videotape. Uh, for this example, I'm using my underdog Nickelodeon recorded tapes that my parents did in 1992. Um, tape 3 is in the VCR, that's playing right now, and it's capturing. But uh, yeah, I just need a videotape, because that's pretty important if you want to rip them. Uh, pretty much every single tutorial like this is gonna say you're gonna need some double-sided composite video and audio cables. So, uh, that's no different here, the same sort of thing. Just like all the rest of the tutorials out there, you're gonna have to plug one end of the composite plugs into the output of whatever the VHS is playing on. Uh, in your case, it might be a standalone VCR. In my case, just like last time, it's built into the TV. Most of the rest of the tutorials will be like, oh, plug the other end of the cables into a Dazzle or a similar capture device. Uh, but instead, I have it plugged into this mini DV camcorder from, I think, 2001? I bought it in 2012 because I wanted to make videos that looked like they were made in 2004. But, uh, I recently stopped doing that for that purpose and realized, hey, I could record videotapes with this. And that's what I've been doing for websites like MySpleen and shit like that. So most camcorders like this, I'm assuming, work the same way, but, uh... They got the composite plugs, they both work as an input and an output depending on like what setting you're on. So we're using them as an input right now. So in the case of my camera, we want to flip this little rocker switch to VCR mode. And then once we notice that the uh, picture's coming in there, we want to click record, start, and stop. So once I hit the record button, this little tape recording symbol will show up on the top corner of the screen. Uh, but it won't be red. What I have to do at that point is press the play button on the tape and then it'll start recording whatever is coming through the input jacks. And it's with this method that I actually get a lot better quality ripping than with a Dazzle device, because that, I think, only records to MPEG-2 video. But in this case, since it's a DV tape, I'm getting DV AVI quality video. Okay, so I've filled this tape up as far as it can go. So I'm now rewinding this back to the beginning, and I'm about to rip it to the computer. Um, once that's done, I'm going to rip the rest of the tape, and then rip that to the computer as well. Okay, it's pretty much fully rewound now, and uh, once that's done, you want to plug in your FireWire cord. Uh, if you don't have a FireWire port in your computer, that's perfectly understandable because it's 2017. You might be thinking, well, why am I watching this if I can't even fucking use a camcorder like this? Well, don't fret. The tools I use to fix up the audio and video after it's all captured, you can use no matter what tool you use to capture it. So uh, I would stick around just for that. But for the next little bit, I'm just going to show you what I use that is very specific to me and utilizes a camcorder and a firewire connection. So, uh, sorry. Okay, so this is the program that I use to rip videos off of the camcorder that I use. It's an old version of Windows Movie Maker that first showed up on Windows Vista, but you can find a download for it and get it to work on modern operating systems, so that's good. Uh, if you don't like Windows Movie Maker or you want to not use it, I know Adobe Premiere and Sony Vegas can also rip from DV cameras like this. So, uh, you know, do whatever you want there. The process is basically the same. But we're going to go over to here, Import from Digital Video Camera. Now, you're going to want to label it whatever you want. I don't know what you're ripping. I don't really care. But since this is the first part of the third underdog tape, I'm labeling it underdog 3-1. Now, for this, you're going to want a lot of hard drive space free. Uh, you're going to want to save it as audio video interleaved single file. Uh, I don't know what this Windows Media video thing saves it like. I'm assuming it's worse. So you click next only import parts of the videotape to my computer. Because I already rewound to the beginning of the tape, I can just click Start Video Import, and just like that, I'll be ripping it to the computer. Alright, so now that we've finished recording this entire tape, we can get into processing the video and the audio and making it look and sound pretty much as best as we can. 
So I've got the video I just captured in Vegas right now, and I made a little bit of a preset file that I could just load all of the captured video into that have worked for the first two tapes I ripped and should work for this and the last one too. So what it is, I basically have a, a video effect here with the color corrector in Vegas, and I have the settings like this. It's basically dumbing down the saturation just a tiny little bit, and then making small changes with the gain and the gamma. Now, I'd like you to look at the video preview and see what it looks like with and without this effect. I'll click around and you can see different spots. Say what you want, but I think this personally looks better, at least with the darker outlines actually looking dark instead of washed out like they would normally. Um, the problem is with the Nickelodeon airings of the underdog episodes is that the colors are kind of all over the place. So I'm really only doing this to get the darker colors darker, because in terms of the hue in which everything aired, it's gonna be off no matter what. Now let's focus on the audio portion, because I feel like uh, audio is just as important, if not more important, than the video with these sort of rips. And I feel like you can a lot of times get away without having to mess with the colors of the video, but I feel like you should always try and fix the audio, even if you think it sounds sort of okay. So we'll just go to this bit here and split it, just so we have uh, a sort of reference from where we started. So let's listen to this. <laughs> One empty car coming in. One empty car coming in. One car rock candy coming out. One so that sounds pretty much fine because this is with all of my uh, fixer uppers and filters and equalization. So if we wanted to hear how it sounded without all of that, it would sound like this. One empty car coming in. One empty car coming in. One car rock candy coming out! One car rock candy coming out! So that doesn't sound ridiculously terrible, but like I say, we definitely want to fix it up just a little bit. And let's divert the video for a second and talk about why we might want to fix it up. Here's a fun fact about me. I've got pretty bad tinnitus, so when there's no sound in a room, this is what I hear. You may be thinking, hey, one, that's pretty annoying. Two, that's a similar sound that you hear when you're next to an old tube TV. And yeah, you're right. And when you capture videotape audio, um, that high-pitched ringing is going to be there. Now, each tape is different, so the severity of that ringing may be different. But I feel it's always good to filter that sound out with equalization. This is what you do. So let's take a look at all the filters I have going on here. So you click this puzzle piece looking button. First off, we've got graphic EQ, and I'm not using this particular filter a lot, except for uh, filtering down that high-pitched ringing. Then I have a volume uh, plugin. Now, sometimes I'll use it, sometimes I won't. Like I say, it depends on the tape. Lastly, I'll use the track EQ and put it way near the end, and I'll make it look exactly like this. And that is pretty much guaranteed to get rid of that uh, high pitch rigging noise. And that's pretty much all you need. Uh, anything beyond that, uh, you might think you need noise reduction, but. I got a little thing to say about noise reduction. For the love of God, don't use noise reduction. Noise reduction sounds like fucking shit, and it will destroy whatever audio you try to process with it. And that's all I'm going to say. And if you don't understand why I don't like it, then uh, it's not worth explaining. I forgot to mention this, but this is really important. Go to your video preview and click the gear on the top left, and make sure every single setting here looks exactly like this. Otherwise, when you try to render it, it won't look fantastic. Um, so you can make sure it looks like that. Then once everything's ready and everything's pieced together, you can go to File and Render As. And from here, you could probably save it as MPEG-2 if you really wanted to, but I'm going to save it as NTSC DV under AVI just because I'm going to convert it to MPEG-2 using a different program. So once I have the second part of the tape ripped, I'll show you what I do with the other program. All right, so at this point we got ourselves uh, the finished file straight from Vegas, and now here's that other program I was talking about. I'm not going to try and read it because it doesn't roll off the tongue very well. You can see it right there. So we're going to click Source. We're going to drag our file right into there, and it's going to open up a new window. From here you can set all the filters that you would want to in this program or if you wanted to trim off a little bit at the end that you forgot to while you were splicing the stuff together, 
thankfully I don't have to. And the filters here include deinterlacing, cropping, noise reduction, which I never use uh, for video and audio, contouring, not entirely sure what that is, color correction, which is messing with the hues and saturation, uh, volume adjustment, which I find very useful, and picture resize if you wanted to uh, compress it down. Now you can do whatever you want here, this is really up to you. But if you're doing what I'm doing and just saving an AVI file as an MPEG-2 DVD quality file, you're going to want to do absolutely nothing. From here, you want to go to Format. And I have a preset here that's MPEG-2 VHS. But what it basically is, is a DVD standard MPEG file with most of these options staying the same. But I'm going to click my option anyway. Really the only option here that I changed was the average bitrate. Here you can see it's 5100 kilobits a second. I think that's fine for most things. Uh, the maximum bitrate's 9200. I just leave it at that. And I leave the audio bitrate options as they are. So from here, I can basically just go to encode and click this button to start the encode. So once you start the encoding process, it's going to take maybe two hours depending on your computer specifications and how long the thing you're trying to save is. But in my case, after it's done, it should look something like this. And it looks fine. So once all those tapes are done, you're going to be seeing them on my spleen if you're on there. Feel free to grab them, share them around. I don't really care. Uh, that's it. Thanks.